Yo YouTube, it's the Pulster here, aka Angelos, and today I will be bringing you a 4v4 commentary video on the uh, Finland map. Uh, and today I will be playing as Austria, and I will be bringing five Grenzers, four Guards, and two Hungarian Hussars. Uh, right, okay, and I'm also playing with a BW clan, no randoms today, thank god. I've had, a, I've had my fill of randoms for the entire year, and I don't really want to play with any randoms anymore, because they're just so unpredictable. Uh, okay, um, yeah, I'm playing with a BW clan. Uh, not all of them, uh, the ones that matter. No, not the ones that matter, the ones that are online at the time. Aleron and uh, the Butcher Basra both play as France, Knight plays as Great Britain, and as I've already said, I play as Austria. Now, these are our opponents. Uh, one plays as Holland, one, two play as Great Britain, and one plays as Prussia. Now, they correctly all rush the key areas of the map and hold them, but uh, this uh, vid will be dis uh, dis showing how one mistake by one of our opponents cost the entire uh, opposition's team the battle. Okay, now on the far uh, right there's a large hill which the British guy decides to rush. Um, it's smart, but really, if no one challenges you for the hill, there's no point in sitting on it. I know it's got a really nice view up there. I mean, you can have a nice picnic and all, but really, you don't need to stay on a hill that no one's going to challenge you for. You just look like a tit. <laughs> uh, no offence to the guy. I mean, he does come off the hill in the end, but he takes quite a while to, to actually uh, move off it. We were quite clearly not going to attack him on, on the hill, because, um, well, we both have vertigo, <laughs> and we don't like high ground. So um, we don't go up there. Instead, uh, we decide to uh, set up in the flat area and wait for a little while to see what develops. I cannot rush the wood with Grenzers because I will get shot to pieces by his Prussian Jaegers. I would be able to break through eventually, but I would take too many losses. But in the end, it doesn't. Uh, it's neither me nor Knight that force a move. It's actually Said. Uh, Said is uh, the butcher of Basra. He's called Said because that's his name in reality. <laughs> and um, he attacks the British guy directly ahead of him. The British guy takes the bait, thinks, ooh goody, I get to kill someone, goes charging at him like a madman, uh, leaves his defensive position, gets both of his flanks totally exposed, and me and Aleron think, hmm, goody goody, we have a flank to uh, chew up. So I send my Grenzers, who are, who are hungry for um, uh, some guards. <laughs> Grenzers are probably the best uh, unit to take out guards and line infantry. Uh, this uh, line inf is one of their five a day, I think. They they absolutely love tearing them guys apart. Okay, so my Grenders get set up in the wood. Uh, he dispatches free line inf to try and stop me from taking his flank. It's too late though. Knight takes up my original position to d to uh, ensure that the uh, British and the Prussian guy do not attack me in the rear while I, while uh, me and uh, Aleron and Said finish this move off. Okay, now Said comes back out of the wood after feigning a, uh, a retreat dispatches two uh, line inf to uh, the right flank to begin encircling the British guy while I send over my Hungarian Hussars who I'm finding it hard to, to actually keep up with with my camera actually because they're going so bloody fast that's, the, that's what I like about light cav, they, they, they cover ground extremely quickly okay I was going to attack his uh, skirmishers but instead I decide to attack his line inf <laughs> and, I, and I think two of them uh, just uh, broke the world record for hurling a human being there <laughs> judging by the uh, distance I managed to throw those um, uh, those uh, British line infantry units. Okay, my Grenzers are here. That they're, They've got their wish of having line inf come straight into their face, and so they're, they're just shooting them up. Uh, my light cav, I cannot keep in a permanent position for too long. The light cav, the, uh, the advantage they have over heavy cav is their man manoeuvrability, and the ability to disrupt line infantry formations is uh, a huge asset for them. Okay, so I, I hit that line inf which I hit in the first place. That uh, ensures he cannot shoot at anyone while Said moves his front line up. I then charge into the three that have attacked my flank, cause a chain route and route all three of them. So that's the ability of light cav. You don't want to keep him fixed in one area, uh, uh, trying to do a slogging match with anything, even skirmishers, I wouldn't advise it. Uh, well, yeah, actually against skirmishers I would advise it, if there's nothing else around. None, or uh, if there are other things around, just use them as a disrupting formation, uh, formation uh, unit, I should say. Go from unit to unit to unit to disrupt them and pin them down. Uh, you will take heavy casualties doing this, but it will ensure that his line infantry 
uh, will not be able to uh, attack. Now the Prussian guy thinks he's being smart here. Uh, it's dispatches three Prussian Jaegers, trying to be sneaky, and attacks me, trying to attack me in the rear uh, while I'm trying to attack the British guy. Knights actually successfully holding off most of the forces, and these are the only forces the Prussian can spare to send over. Lucky me, it's uh, skirmishers. So he does exactly what I want him to do, which is to go into the valley between the two rocks. Uh, I let him come as uh, far into the valley as he as he wants, uh, and then I charge him in the front with four guards, take the hit, take the null with my five Grenzes, and swing my second Hussars, uh, not second Hussars, that's Prussians, that's from playing Prussia too often, my Hungarian Hussars, big difference, they're still Hussars, uh, I, I put them in a position round the back of the Prussian Jaegers to ensure there's no escape, uh, I close the valley off from both sides, pour uh, a massive lead into the um, Prussian Jaeger unit, I then stop my Grenzers from firing so I don't kill my uh, Hungarian Hussars. Charge my Hungarian Hussars in from the back. When you charge a unit from the back, they usually panic. It's quite uh, reasonable, frankly, if you're getting charged into from behind and you're looking the other way. It would generally panic most human beings. So, um, here I just, you know, have a nice Prussian sandwich. Uh, the Prussian Jaeger unit there gets squished by two uh, Cav and four um, guards. It's a nice pile up there as the uh, Grenzes all bump, uh, not Grenzes, the guards all bump into the back of one another as they're trying to get a kill. Okay, now um, my Grenzes finished their job. Uh, his three Prussian Jaegers totally destroyed. I then switch my Grenzes back over to f help finish off the, uh, the help finish off the uh, British guy over here. Okay, so while Saeed carries uh, pours on the fire from the front, I uh, get round the flank. Laron, you can see him manoeuvring round for a, a bit of flanking attack um, on the uh, British uh, skirmisher units. That's the only units the British guy has left. He has lost his entire army in under five minutes. I would even go as far to say he's lost his entire army in under one minute, if you count the uh, uh, the time it took from my hussars to arrive to um, where we are now. It's not one minute, it's more like two, but still, it's very quickly done anyway. So anyway, that British guy came so far ahead, he exposed his flank. We quickly took the flank. Uh, Knight then ensured that none of them came from behind. Knight's going to take an absolute beating in the process, but it's necessary. Um, the British guy who was in front of us is destroyed. That gives us an advantage. We're now four to three up against our opponents. Now the Prussian guy and the uh, other British guy, the British guy that's still alive, not Knight, that's the British guy on our side. My god, there are so many British guys. <laughs> that is really annoying. Okay, so um, the Prussian and the enemy British guy uh, get round our back and start sending Cav into us, but with no support, uh, that that's pretty futile. I had to recharge this Prussian Jaeger unit. Obviously, they, uh, they they thought they were harder than they were, when in fact they really should be going picking flowers, or <laughs> because that's all they're that's all they're good for. Picking flowers. What the hell? <laughs> that, that sounded good when I thought of it, but that's just random. Okay, so. Um, the Prussian Jaegers, uh, I recharged them, like I said, they rout, they don't come back this time. Uh, uh, and um, without any skirmisher support, the Prussian uh, army, uh, who is on the British, the enemy British guy's right flank now, has no skirmisher support. So I can force him to come towards me with my Grenzes. Because uh, Knight has now fulfilled his job of slowing the British and Prussian armies down, he can now fall back before his entire army is destroyed by a mass of Ferguson bullets. So, the British guy uh, continues advancing towards the uh, towards Knight, so it's another feigned withdrawal, basically. Um, luckily for me, uh, I've already set up on his flank, so the closer the British guy comes, the uh, more eager my Grenzers are to start shooting him in the face. So, my Grenzers are already set up, uh, ready, to, um, ready to fire. There was one volley straight into the flank of the British guy. Uh, this will now force the British guy to reset his line to face me, causing his flank to now face Knight's units, uh, but dang it, I was actually getting into that. Stay tuned for part two.